Yesterday we looked at basically how to select things using shapes. So we looked at how to use the rectangular marquee tool for selecting rectangular and square items. Uh, we looked at the elliptical marquee tool and how to use that for circular shapes. And then we also looked at the polygon tool to select, <coughs> polygonal lasso tool to select abnormal shapes. Um, and the, the thing that kind of tied them all in together was in our options panel, we have these two buttons, one add to selection, and then we could also subtract from the selection. And those were the, the main points of yesterday that we were looking at. But today what we're going to look at is how to select colors. So that's the other way that we can make selections. Um, this would be a good example of when we would want to select colors. Because look at these roses. It's, it's circular, but the roses aren't perfectly circular. There's little ins and outs in between the roses. Um, so the elliptical tool really wouldn't work too well in this situation. Uh, you could obviously not the rectangular marquee tool. Uh, you could try the polygonal lasso tool. It would just take you forever to do it. So the way that we're going to look at today is, is going to be a kind of a time saver. So first thing that we want to do is make a duplicate. So go to Image Menu, Duplicate, give it a new name. And when you're done with that, you're going to want to unlock the background layer. So I'm assuming you guys have unlocked that background layer now. All right. So we want to get all the red. So one of the two, we basically have two ways to select color. And one of these ways is going to be using the magic wand tool. Now by default, it's, it's the fourth tool down. And by default, I think the quick selection tool is, is there first. So click and hold on that. And below that, you'll see the magic wand tool. And that's the one we want. Before you start using it, again, there's two things that you want to check. One in your options panel, you want to make sure that it's add to selection. So every time you, you click, it adds it to your selection, your current selection. It doesn't get rid of what's already selected. The other thing that you're going to want to look at is this tolerance. And I'll show you why. It goes up to 100. And I'm going to just select a black part here of the, the roses. And look all the extra stuff that it gave me. The tolerance, what that does is basically think of it as color range. Um, the higher it is, the more colors it's going to select. Whereas in a really low tolerance level, like 10, if I select that same area, it's going to give me a very uh, precise selection. So the trick in using this tool is kind of finding the balance. And I'll kind of let you try and figure that out for yourself. But you're just going to go through and start clicking on the red, the reds, to try and get your, the flowers.
Okay, so as you're figuring out, it's going to be a lot of clicks. And it might not be exactly perfect, um, but we don't really need it to be at this point. So we're going to change the color of this and just to see how good our selection is and to do some experiments. So let's, let's copy this into a new layer. So if you remember how to do that, go up to the layer menu. With it selected, go up to the layer menu, go to new, and then layer via copy. And that's going to create a new layer. And I'm just going to hide this background layer so that I can see my selection. And now if I wanted to recolor it, I want to have this layer selected still. Go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, and I can kind of play around with that. And the spots that you miss will stand out the most, obviously. All right, so, so with this method, it does a pretty good job, depending on how well you clicked. Uh, but when we went to change color, you're going to notice some, some changes. So I know it's hard for you to see on your screen or on the projector, but on your monitor, you'll probably notice some things like mismatching colors. They're, they're somewhat subtle, but it does limit you as far as the, the colors you can choose, I guess, when changing color. So that's one method. Sometimes it's good. Um, sometimes we need to use it in a combination of a couple other tools. So we'll look at that second tool now. So click on back to the background layer. And I'm going to hide that new layer that we made, layer one. Press Control D to get rid of your selection. And this time, we're going to go to the Select menu and then Color Range. It's halfway down. You have a dialog box that pops up. And it could it has this black and white image there. Now, the things that are black will not be selected. The things that are white those will be selected. So put your cursor off, off that dialog box onto the picture somewhere. And it turns into a little eyedropper. So what it's asking us to do is to pick a color. So pick somewhere on the red. Click anywhere on that red. And you'll see it change. So right now it's telling us um, all this white is going to be selected, all the black will not be. And look at this, this fuzziness slider selects how, how much contrast basically there is. So between the black and the white. So you want to find a nice in between. If, if I have mine all the way to the right, over here, I can still see some of the background, and that will get selected. This selection method selects transparencies, and I'll explain that in a second. You'll just have to see it. So once you get to a point, go ahead and click OK. And I'll have all this stuff selected. And before we do anything, we're just going to put this into another layer, create a copy. So layer, new, layer via copy. And this will make layer number two. And 
And I'm gonna hide my background layer to see what it did. You should have something similar to this. Now, in comparison, this was our first method. This was the second method. So it selected transparencies because you can kind of see through some of these. And it looks like it didn't get a whole lot, but let's try changing the color of that layer. So image adjustments, hue saturation, and it's actually going to be, for me, on mine, it selected way better. I have a lot more, the range of colors that I can choose is, right now I can do pretty much any color I want, and it, it'll look natural. So those are the two different methods that we can use. And sometimes we'll want a combination. I'll show you one other way to use that, that second method. So go back to hide the, the top two layers there, layer one and layer two. And go back to the background layer. And this time we want to select the background, everything except the red, because we're going to change the color of that. So uh, with our background layer selected in blue, we're going to go back to the select menu and then color range. And it saves our selection from last time. So all we're going to do is click on this button over here, invert, which selects the opposite of what we had. And we can play with the slider a little bit if you need to. Um, and then uh, click OK. It'll select everything except what we had before, pretty much. So this time we're going to make another copy of this layer. and you can see what you get. And then when you play around with your hue saturation, you can either, you, you can apply all kinds of different effects. Or you can make it like a black white. All right, so this was, um, so hopefully you were able to change the background and the color of the flowers. And the only two tools that we used to do that was the select color range, I guess that's more of a command, and then this magic wand tool. All right, open up another file. This file will be called um, Butterfly. <coughs> 